Are you ready? I'm gonna, I, I started a series last week on the topic of courage, subtitle, Being the Best That You Can Be. Everybody shout courage. courage. See, you cannot be the best that you can be without courage. And my goal in this series is to help you know how to be courageous, what courage is, what it's not, how to summon courage, build courage, grow courage in your own life. Somebody shout courage. courage. Joshua chapter 1. This is where we read last week. This was our text, but we limited, limited it to a couple of verses. I want us to do a little bit more of an extensive reading today. Joshua 1, verse 1. It reads like this. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give the, to them, to the Israelites. Everybody shout, get ready. get ready. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Now, in these first five verses of this book, this, cha this chapter, God's telling Joshua basically three things. He's telling him, first of all, get ready to cross over. Say it again. Shout, get ready. get ready. Say it again. Get ready. get ready. The Jordan River represented the boundary line between their past and their future. And God was saying to them, I want you to, I want you to think about what we're doing. I want you to prepare yourself for what we're doing. We're going to leave the past behind. We're going to head into the future. Somebody say it again. Get ready. Get ready. Second thing he told them was, I'm going to expand your territory. Now, up until then, they lived small, limited lives, lives in poverty, lives in slavery and oppression. And God's plan was for them to break out of their past and experience a bigger life, experience freedom, progress, growth, prosperity. And by the way, what God wanted for them, He wants for us today. The third thing that He told them in these five, first five verses was that you will win every battle because I am with you. See, God doesn't promise us that there won't be battles. God doesn't tell us that life will be easy or we won't have struggles, troubles, disappointments, and setbacks. It's just the opposite. When you're going where God wants you to go, you're going to have some battles to fight. Somebody shout, get ready. Get ready. Somebody shout, courage. Get ready. Which explains, when you understand that, it explains why in the next few verses that there was an emphatic and repetitious appeal to Joshua, commanding him to be courageous. So verse 6, first line of verse 6 says, be strong and courageous. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. See, God is calling everyone here towards something this year that's going to require greater courage than you've had in the past. Think about what I'm saying to you. Places where you haven't been, situations and circumstances that you haven't experienced yet, you're going to have opportunities, you're going to have open doors. God's got those open doors for you. He's got assignments with your name on it. 
But the only way that we're going to really experience the fullness of what God has for us in 2020 is if we have the courage to walk through the door. If we have the courage to fight the adversity on our way to where God's taking us. For example, in the same way that Joshua was feeling grief over the loss of his leader, his mentor, Moses, he was, he was just full of grief and he was discouraged. Some of you are grieving the loss of a person in your life. Some of you are grieving the loss of a relationship in your life. And even though logically you know that you need to let go, you need to move on, it's going to take more courage than you've had in the past for you to actually let go of the past and embrace the present and get excited about the future. Shout courage. In the same way Joshua felt inadequate, he felt uncertain of his own ability to step into the role, the void, the vacancy of leadership. Some of you are also wondering, can I do this? Like, can I really do this? You got a nagging question in your mind. In fact, some, sometimes it's there so much that we don't even notice it. But it, there's an insecurity. There, there's a feeling of inadequacy. Can I get through school? Can I pass the test? What, if, what happens if nobody wants to hire me when I do get out of school? What happens, what happens now that I've lost my job? What, does anybody want me in, in, a, in a new position? Or maybe for you, it's can, can I get out of the financial mess that I'm in right now? Or do I have what it takes to be a great parent? To my kids. I mean, I don't know what you're dealing with or what exactly you might feel inadequate in, but I do know that everyone here has feelings of being not enough to do the things that God has put in our heart to do. And, and you may think it's just you. I want to assure you it's not just you. I have feelings on a consistent basis. Can I do that? Like, can, can I really finish this book that I started? Whose idea was it anyway? Like, like, like can I really, can, can I really lead forward in the situation that we're in? Because everything's changed in 2019. We went from two locations to five locations. And I'm wondering what, not only did I write a book, we got more, I, I'm, there, there are moments where I feel inadequate for what I know God is positioning us to do. And sometimes it's not as big. It's not like what everyone else knows about. My daughter, Jody, posted on Instagram this past week, and it was pictures of her and her husband, Ryan, with the two boys, Kyan and Cody. And on the post, she shared how parenting has been the most rewarding while simultaneously the most challenging season of her life. Isn't that interesting? Most rewarding, most challenging. Think about it. Because a lot of times we miss out on what's most rewarding because we don't have the courage to deal with the most challenging. Can we talk? And then she wrote, we are determined to raise godly men who love Jesus, love their family, and love people. Now, I read that, and of course, I did what you're doing. I clap in my head, in my heart. You go, girl. But the truth is, is that the, the oldest one is turning 10 in a couple days. Happy birthday, Kai. The youngest one is four. They got their work cut out for them. This is not, you don't just send them off to a, a kid farm. You may want to, <laughs> but you wake up with real children in your life every day who have all kinds of stuff going on, all, all kinds of ideas and concepts, moods like crazy, and for some people, the demands of parenting 
it does come more natural. But for others, it's a daunting task for which you feel inadequate. And, and, and for some of you, you feel incapable of making the adjustments and giving your kids the time that they need and the patience and the support and the love that you know that they really need from you and that you want to give them. You just don't know if you can measure up. And some of you have in your mind, you've got, well, if I'd have had a dad, I could be a better dad. Or I'd been raised in a stable home. I could, I could lead a, a, a stable. you got all of those senses and feelings. And there's elements of truth, of course, in some of that. But at the end of the day, it leaves you without the courage that you really need to be able to do at the, at the top level, at your very best, what it is that God's given you to do. And so in this, in, in this series, I'm here to put courage in you. I'm here to hopefully encourage you to, help you, to tell you how to know, to build your own courage, develop your own courage, and to get ready. You've got to have more courage for this year and for the days ahead of you. You cannot abdicate your parenting to someone else. You've seen You've seen, your moms and dad have seen people do that. That's not what you want to do. You want to be the dad. You want to be the mom. And I'm here to tell you, come on, that regardless of what you feel sometimes, you have everything you need. And even some of you, let me just say this, to single parent, sometimes a, a, a single parent, a gal, for example, she'll feel like, well, there's got to be a man. Without a man, he's only got part of the... My little boy's only got part of the dynamic, doesn't have a man in his life. And just be careful how far you go down a road like that. Because the, the Scripture teaches us that he can be a father to the fatherless. And, and God has the ability to fill gaps if we'll just have courage. Come on, if we'll just have courage. And your need for courage might be something completely different than letting go of the past or parenting your children. It could be breaking free of a toxic relationship. It could be starting a new business that's in your heart to start. It could be that you're at a place right now where God's calling you to give Him your best. Seek first the kingdom of God and make a commitment to make Him first in your day, first in your week, first in your finances. The point is, one thing for sure, if God has His way in your life this year, you will need more courage than you've had in the past. Are you with me? So now you might be saying, okay, so I, I get it. I'm, I'm with you, Pastor Kevin, but how can I have the courage I need to be the best that I can be? I'm so glad you asked because... I'm going to begin right now. I'm going, to, I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to give you some tools to work with. Okay? Take notes if, if you can. If you want to walk out different, maybe you want to take some notes. Number one, you don't have to feel courageous to be courageous. When God told Joshua to be courageous, he knew that Joshua did not feel courageous. Courageous people are people who do what they're committed to do even when they don't feel like doing it. <laughs> Come on, they do it anyway. And if it scares them, they do it scared. Are you hearing me? Don't let yourself one more day assume that, well, yeah, if I... You know, it, 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 they have courage that I don't have, and they don't have any fear, and they don't have, they're not scared. I'm scared, and I, I don't, I don't want to do that, so I, I don't know how to do that. And, and they do, like, they want to do that. They, they, they really want to go to church all the time, but I struggle, like, wanting to go to church all the time. And can I just tell you, there's a lot of days I don't want to come to church. <laughs> Serious. And then I remember, okay, I'm the pastor. I guess I better go. And there's a lot of times when I'm preparing a message, I'll have feelings like, of, you know, I have brain blocks and stuff like that. And I'll, I'll think to myself, man, come on, God, let, let, let them figure it out on their own. <laughs> like, 
let, let them dig into the Word. Give me a break. Like, you know, you, you get all kinds of feelings in a sense sometimes of, 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 of and, and, and you know, courageous people do it anyway. And that's what makes them courageous. There was two church leaders in the New Testament who were beaten and thrown in prison for preaching Jesus. And at midnight in the dark dungeon, rather than having a pity party, which you know they felt like having, rather than sulking, they started singing. (laughs) They just started letting it rip with wounds all over their body, mistreatment, being abused, darkness all around them. I don't think you and I could imagine how bad jail would have been in that day. And with all of that going on, they're, they're, they're singing, you can do all things, but fail. Like they're, they're, they're singing like, my God is great. My God is powerful. You're a God of the valley. You're a God in the prison. And they're just singing and belting out the bigness of God. See, courageous people do what they don't feel like doing. You don't have to feel courageous to be courageous. Secondly, remember, I started talking about this last week. I want this to stick in your, in your heart, your mind. Remember, when you think of courage, courage is not a feeling, but what is it? It's a mind muscle. It's a mind muscle. So like any muscle, it gets stronger when you do what? You exercise it, and it stays weak when you don't. Jason, Jason Lee, will you come up and help me today? Just... Come on up, you mighty man. I'm not sure if you knew I was going to do this or not, but would you right now, would you drop down and give me 10 push-ups? Can you do that? Is your arm okay? Is your shoulder good? You look like you could rip that off like one, two. Go, Jason, go, Jason, go, Jason, go, Jason, go, Jason, go, Jason, go. Was that 10? You got five more in you. I need five more. You got five more. Five more. Go, Jay. Go, Jay. Go, Jay. Go, Jay. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Thank you, man. Way to go. Stay up here just a second. Okay, so I feel stronger, folks. I feel. Take on the world. How many of you know that nobody can do your push-ups for you? Come on. How many of you know that it doesn't matter? You could go sit in the gym, and that doesn't get you fit. And you can sit in church, and that doesn't renew your mind. (laughs) And one more newsflash, muscles don't grow by praying for them to grow. We have been, we have been abusive with prayer. And what I mean by that is we have made prayer to be out something it's never was meant to be. Like prayer, prayer is not supposed to take the place of hard work. Prayer is not, it's not meant to. Prayer is not meant, it, 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 it's a, let's pray, let's keep praying, but prayer is, is not meant to do things because you're you won't get off the couch and do it yourself see the the thing god wants from you and i is you do your best come on joshua you do your best i'm going to lead you i'm going to take care of the enemies in front of you we're going to win battles together but you're going to have to be strong and you're going to have to be courageous you cannot be a cowardly lion you are a lion i need you to be a courageous lion So thank you, thank you, Jason and Lee. Let's give Jason a good hand. Thank you. Come on, nobody can do. Will you remember that? So the exercise that God told Joshua to do when he's telling him be strong and courageous is found in verse eight. And I wanna I wanna share that 
with you. It's in verse 8. Here's what God said. He said, keep this book of the law, or keep the Scripture, always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it, and then you will be prosperous and successful. Some of you will begin to build your courage muscle the minute you stop putting all your attention in other places. And, and, you know, there are some of you who love sports so much. I love sports. Go Hawks. Let's win. Going to be great. But can I just tell you, some of you know the statistics. You know the players. You know how old they are. But you don't know one verse. And knowing all those stats is not going to help you to get where God wants to take you. It's not going to help you be the man you want to be. So what, what he's telling Joshua, he's saying three things. He's saying, talk about it, meditate on it, and apply it. Talk about it, meditate on it, and apply it. And if you will do that, you will be prosperous and you will be successful. I want you to think about what he's saying here. Because listening to Scripture will bring an overall knowledge of God's Word. But focusing and meditating on just one verse at a time will help you be strong and courageous. Like, if you will take the time to exercise that mind muscle by looking at it, staring at it. I know for me, uh, one, of the, one of the scriptures, that first scriptures when I was just a teenager, and I learned what I learned, by the way, in the King James Version. A lot of what I memorized was the King James Version of Scripture. And it went like this, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou, see, good old King James, be thou dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So Kevin got that when he's a teenager. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the well. I can't tell you how many times I have told myself what God said for me to do. Be strong, Kevin. Be of good courage, Kevin. Don't be afraid, Kevin. Don't be dismayed, Kevin. The Lord is with you, Kevin. No matter where you go, Kevin, you can go to the great Northwest, Kevin, and the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Are you getting it? Am I helping you today? Like, print it out. I mentioned last week that in our home right now, the hallways are lined. At the first of the year, my wife went around. She printed some stuff out. A lot of it is in our new book, Naked and Unafraid. It's some of the proclamations that we have over our life this year. And you walk down the, the – we don't have a large home. You walk in the hallways and through the, from here to there. And it's just they're, – they're, they're, they're hanging up on the wall. Secret, they're even in the bathroom on the wall, like so that what we can see it. I, always, I like to think about it like this. See it, say it, sow it, reap it. See it, say it, sow it, reap it. See it, say it, sow it, reap it. We look at it, and that's something you can do, is that you can take verses of Scripture. And that's what he was telling Joshua to do. He wasn't just saying, be strong and courageous and good luck with that. <laughs> no, no, no. He's saying, here's what you do. Here's what you do. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to, to, to look at what I've written in my Word. And I want you to have it always on your lips. And I want you to meditate on it. Meditate on it in the morning. Meditate on it at night. So for you, it could be the equivalent of just printing it out and putting it places where you'll see it. It could be writing words on your mirror. When your mind starts to go another way, interrupting the negativity and replacing it with God's Word. Words of life, words of faith, words that build the courage muscle. I brought up here with me Today, our, our, uh, one of our books, Mind Monsters, Conquering Fear, Worry, and Guilt, Negative Thoughts That Work Against You. And this book has gone a lot of places, and I'm really 
thankful for the impact that it's had on a lot of people. I think one of my favorite spots was when I saw it in a military in Iraq. It was in a military, one of our, one, a soldier held it up, took a picture, a soldier who had been here at our church and sent it to us to show me that it was in, it was in their tent out there in the desert in that military, I don't even know what you call it, but, um, and, and they have little libraries there where they can check books in, check books out. Another time, someone brought me a book that had been in prison, and all the prisoners had wrote me notes, and I still have it today, but they had passed the book around, and they had wrote me notes and thanked me for this little book. Well, this book may not, it may not look in fact, have the courage to try reading it. It's not that big. Like, you, it's not, it's not, you could do this, like, in a couple of days. Like, you could do it today, probably. It's not that big. But more than just reading it, there's some things in here. There's some tools. For example, I tell you in here what to do with my monsters. You recognize them. You reject them. You replace them, and then you retrain yourself. Four R's. I tell you in here about an acronym for faith. If you want the muscle of faith to grow in your life, focus on the positive, affirm yourself, imagine God doing something good, trust God in everything, and hope for the best. I'm spitting that out because I have branded that on my heart, and I'm just wanting you to understand that there are tools available and there's scriptures in this book. And when, when you began to memorize God's word versus what you're watching on the news, versus what other people are saying, versus what the gossip column is saying, versus what all your friends are talking about, and you start to memorize God's word, God's word will build your courage. It's like you're exercising your courage muscle by, by concentrating and meditating on God's word. There's a 20 something year old gal, her name Sarah, and Sarah was telling me that she had made a decision years ago that she was not going to let negativity be a part of her life or her thinking. And then she went on and she told me that she had witnessed drug and alcohol in her home ever since she could remember as a child. Her father had left and was an alcoholic drug addict when she was very young. And her mom is still a chronic complainer. And the girl herself has been diagnosed with epilepsy. And as she shared that with me, I, I thought I would have never dreamed that she has faced that kind of adversity in her life. Those, are, those would be excuses. Those would be the story of some people's life. But rather than allowing that to be her story, she decided that I'm not going to allow negativity to have a chance in my life. She now loves God. She listens to positive messages and podcasts every day. She has paid her way through college. She's on a career path that she loves, is always happy, upbeat, fun to be around. And a person like that doesn't break free of negativity in their family or push past negative circumstances in their life without courageous daily decisions to let go of the sadness and the grief and the disappointment and to turn on the podcast and to put her eyes into the Word and to listen again and again to the message and meditate on the good and the encouraging and the blessing of God in their life. It just doesn't happen unless they exercise the muscle of the mind to build their career. Am I helping anybody today? Like, you can do this. You can absolutely do this. Somebody shout courage. courage. Say it again. Anybody want more courage? I, am I talking to the right people today? A anybody want more courage? 
Anybody need more courage in the right area, the right space, the right place of your life? Come on, are the things that you really wish could happen, but you don't have the courage right now? Nobody can raise your hand for you. See, when you think courageous, you live courageous. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And you'll be surprised what you can do. You'll be amazed at your potential when you start to think courageous. When you start to think courageous. Doesn't mean you won't feel fear, it just means you start to think courageous. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Courageous. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Courageous. I will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in its season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatsoever I do will prosper. Courageous. 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 Come on, you can do it. Come on, sir, you can do it. Come on, ma'am, you can do it. Come on, young person, you can do it. Your history doesn't have to be your legacy. Let me, let me give you another verse because this past week, we were over on Wednesday night, we were on the east side, and uh, we had a fantastic first Wednesday in Yakima. And I shared a, a message, and I read a verse that's found in Isaiah. And the verse goes like this. It's, it's Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. It says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing, and now it springs forth, do you not, perceive it. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Some of you went through some things in 2019. And 2020 is a scheduled year of all things new in your life. And God is saying to you, I want you to know that I make all things new. What I need you to do is to have the courage to not rehearse the past, remember the former thing, consider the things of old, don't, re don't rehearse it, don't nurse it, don't curse it, just come along with me, take me by the hand, I'm going to take you into a brand new year and all things new year in your life because that's who I am and that's what I do. That's who I am and that's what I do. I'm a God who makes all things new.